Welcome to Art Starts Explores, our province of play. Are you ready to get creative with us this week? Let's review our three basic rules that guide us through our exploration and play. Rule one is respect. We want to respect ourselves, anyone we're making with, our tools and making space, and the lands and waterways where we're making. How can you practice respect when you explore, play, and make? Rule two is no expectations. If we're not expecting something to turn out good or bad, we're open to it going in a whole bunch of different ways. And that means that all respectful, creative explorations are great, regardless of what it ends up looking like. Try to do things you've never tried before and ask yourself, what will happen if I... Rule number three is nothing is for keeps. Everything we make together is a test, or a draft, or creative playtime. We're just trying things out. What can you make or try today and then take apart or recycle? What can we learn by making and not keeping? These are our three rules for when we explore together every week. Okay, what will we explore together this week? everybody, welcome to Art Starts Explores. I'm Raya. My name means source of water in Arabic. I love languages and playing with words. I live on the beautiful territory of the Sinai Nation. My mother's ancestors are from Lebanon and my father's are from Poland. The theme for this month at Art Starts Explores is Erase. And today I'm going to show you how to make some erasure poems. Do you notice that erasure has the word erase inside? We're going to be taking away words to create new words together. So first of all, let's set up our creative space to be really comfortable. I like to work on the floor. And for me, that's a way to respect my body. Chairs are uncomfortable. I prefer to be cross-legged or on my knees. You might also want to put newspaper or paper wherever you're working in case some of our markers bleed through. So take a moment and make sure everybody is comfortable with chairs or on the floor or wherever you like to work best. Now I'd like to show you what materials we need today. I have mark makers, any kinds. I really like colors a lot. So uh, I will put some crayons as part of my materials. I'll also find a highlighter, um, a marker, a Sharpie marker, a pencil, and if I have permission, I'll use some scissors, but I also like to tear my paper up, so you don't need to have these. We're gonna start with a warm up, and I'm calling it playing with words. And in fact, I'm thinking, what if poetry means playing with words? We're gonna do this in a way with no expectations, just having fun to discover, and as always, Nothing is for keeps. I'd like for you to take your recycling bins and start off by going fishing for some material. Using recycled material is a great way to respect the earth. So I have some papers in here that I'm going to use. They're from old magazines, newspapers, Anything else that I find in here that has some words on it, I'm going to use it. And when I'm done, I'll put it right back in. I've chosen a handful of words that I cut up. 
I'll show you what my words are and how we'll play with them. So the words that I chose are love, art, our heart, sadness, creativity, weird and wacky, getting lost. Oh, that must have just been an extra scrap paper. Don't need that. Back to the recycling bin. Everything became beautiful, wild, and voices. I like choosing words that have feelings in them. And poetry is a good place to explore sometimes feeling sad or also feeling wild or creative or really all the feelings that we have. So I'm going to take these words and I'm going to see what happens when I put them together in any combination that I like. I'm going to start with putting them aside and just pulling them. I think I'll start with weird and wacky. I like the sound of those two words together. Weird and wacky what? Weird and wacky art. Weird and wacky sadness. Weird and wacky wild. Ooh, now I like the sounds of all those W's together. Weird and wacky wild art. I think I've made my first little poem. Let's try another one. I'm going to start with sadness. Sadness. What could follow sadness? Sadness. How about sadness getting lost? Sometimes when I feel a little bit lost, I do feel sad. Well, I still have more words to use up. Let's see. How about I start my poem with everything became beautiful voices. Everything became beautiful voices. I like that. Now I have left love, creativity, and our heart. How about I start with our heart, creativity, love. Hmm. Maybe I'll switch it around. I'll start with creativity, love, our heart. I think any combination I make has a different feeling to it. Let's see what happens when we leave these words, how we have them, but we change them up a little bit. I'm going to challenge myself to take away one word from each of these lines. So I'm going to take away... Actually, I'm going to just leave one word. I'm going to just leave the word wild. Wild. Wild sadness or wild getting lost. I think a wild sadness. Everything became beautiful or voices. I'm gonna leave voices. My poem now reads, wild sadness, voices, creativity, love, or our heart. Wild sadness, voices, our heart. Hmm. Does this little poem have some feeling? I think so. Don't know exactly what it means, but it has feeling and it has a little bit of a picture that I can make in my own imagination. Now, the last thing I wanna do is I wanna play with how my words look. If I opened up a book, they would probably be all alongside of each other like this. But one of the funnest things about poetry is that you can change the order and put the words however you want. And you can even leave a lot of white space in between. So I'm going to keep wild. I'll put sadness here. Voices. Our heart. Well, that was a fun little warm up for me to play with those words. I hope you have a chance now to take some scissors or to tear about 10 words and just play around again with how those words might look, sound, and feel together. Just to remind you, we're going to cut or tear, I'm not sure of the spelling of tear, but that's one of the fun things about this poetry. You don't have to be a great speller and you don't even have to like writing very much because the words are already there. So you're gonna cut or tear about 10 words. You're gonna find a few that have feeling like sadness or love. 
And then you're gonna play with where the words want to be and how does the meaning and feeling change if you play around with them? Maybe one last challenge. How does the shape change the poem? Pay attention. As always, no expectations, just for some creative fun. I'm gonna tidy up here while you get cutting away on your new words. In my words, I'm gonna put them back in the my recycling bin. Thank you, words. Okay, now we're gonna move into the next part of our time together. I'm gonna show you what an erasure poem is. We know it's got the word erase in it. It's also called a blackout poem, or sometimes it's called found, and that's because we're working with words that are already there. We just have to find them and decide that we like them and we wanna play around with them. Now, before we get going, I'm going to introduce you to my book friend, Austin Cleon. He's a writer who all of a sudden was not having fun writing anymore. He got stuck and frustrated and almost gave up. But on his ride to work every day, he took a newspaper and he started leaving some words and taking the words away. He found this to be a lot more fun than thinking of his own words and soon he had a whole book full of them. I'm going to show you a few examples. So this one is from a newspaper and he's left out the word sing to me, oh muse, I have the time and the spot. I'll show you another one. This one reads, the ages of trees authorized by rings. What I really like about this poem is that he's used a little dotted line with an arrow to show us how we can read the poem so we don't get lost on the page. In English, we read from the left to the right. In Arabic, we read from right to left. But thinking we're gonna be using English today, Let's see if maybe when we're exploring, we can use some lines, some arrows to help with the direction. I'm also going to show you this one. This is a newspaper blackout, and it seems to me like the author used the headline from a newspaper where the letters are a bit big, and then from inside the rest of the newspaper. So this one reads, how to be exceptional. The first step is to stop trying. I think that's a good match for one of our rules. No expectations. I really like this one too. It reads, again, in big letters, so maybe from the title, too little art and so much time. I notice that there aren't very many words in these poems. One, two, three, four five, six, seven. These are quite short. Now we're gonna get the chance to make some together. I'm gonna start with my newspaper here that I found in my recycling. And I'm just going to find a little bit of words. And one rule that helps me a lot is to choose a piece of writing that is not bigger than my hand. And the reason is that if we have too many words, sometimes we can get stuck on, I don't know if that's the right word, or maybe I'll find a better word later. If we go short, then we just work with what we have. And I think it's actually really helpful. I have a messy, torn piece of paper about the size of my hand, and now, I'm going to start by finding a word that has a lot of energy. It's sometimes called an anchor word. Now, if I have a sailboat and it's out at sea and it's very, very, very windy out at sea, can you think of something that would help my sailboat from drifting? Well, an anchor would. An anchor would keep my boat from drifting all over the place. And when we're writing poems, 
we're actually going to start by finding an anchor word, a word that has energy that we're going to underline. So I'm going to show you how I find an anchor word. This is my piece of writing, and I'm going to read it in out loud. Castle Legacy Park Sculpture. Hmm, do any of those words have a lot of energy for me? I think I'm going to keep on reading. Recently installed Legacy Park, colorful, spherical. Oh, colorful. I like the word colorful. I'm going to underline just the word colorful, and it's going to be my anchor word. Colorful. Now, I'm going to hold this word in my head, and I'm going to look for another word that might follow it. Colorful what? I have no idea. Colorful reflect. Colorful connect. Colorful focus. Colorful read. Colorful piece. Colorful textures. Oh, there's lots of good choices. I'm going to look for something maybe a little bit surprising. Colorful, colorful cloud. What do you think? Colorful cloud. I'm going to keep looking for words. Colorful cloud stainless colorful cloud walking well clouds don't walk but that sounds a little bit fun for my imagination colorful cloud walking where is it walking to i don't know i'm gonna have to use a word that i find colorful cloud walking around colorful cloud walking perspective colorful cloud walking shapes Colorful cloud, walking shapes, six feet tall. Okay. Colorful cloud, walking shapes, six feet tall. Now, if I could take away a word, it might have a little bit more power to it. How about I just get rid of shapes? Colorful cloud, walking six feet tall. You know what? I'm just going to get rid of the six feet tall. I'm just going to say colorful cloud walking. What do you think? Well, it has a little bit of feeling and it does create a picture and it's a bit surprising. Now I'll go back and I'll take everything away except for those three words. One, two, three. Yeah, three words that I've chosen to make a little poem. Let's do another example together. Here's a piece of writing that's from a magazine. It can be fun to use magazines because they sometimes have um, color and pictures in the background and you might like to use them as well for your poems. So I'm going to start again, underlining my anchor word First of all, I've already chosen a piece of paper with words about the size of my hand. Started my word with energy is what I'm about to do. And then I'm going to hold this word in my head. I'm going to underline it. When I have about five words, I'm going to see if I can stop. And I might even go back and take away others as well. Let's make another one. I'm going to use this pink, pink felt tip marker. The title reads, Connecting Threads for 40 Years. Hmm. I think the word threads has energy for me. I can picture all kinds of threads. Maybe even like spider web threads or threads on a textile shirt. Threads, threads fall, threads celebrating, threads skill, threads giving. Ooh, let's try giving. Threads giving. Now, I don't know what they're giving, but I'm going to keep on going with my poem till I find out. Threads giving community, threads giving organizations, threads giving display, threads giving photos, threads giving workshop. I'm almost out of words. Sometimes I get a little nervous, but it's okay. Worst case, this poem won't work. 
Let's see if we can still find something for our poem here. Threads giving with doing book. Threads giving support. Ooh, what do you think about that? Threads giving support. Threads giving support in. Threads giving support in author, history, coast, knitting techniques. Threads giving support in, hey, on the bottom I have fallen winter. Why don't I say winter? That makes me think of how grateful I am for my cozy clothes in winter. Threads giving support in winter. Okay, I think that works all right. And I don't have to black it out in the way of lines. If I wanted to, I might even incorporate a picture that has something to do with what my writing has come to mean. So maybe this is going to be my sweater in the winter time. And maybe I'll just take away the rest of the words by making little threads. I guess threads could be this shape too, or like that. It's a lot of fun to go back in your poems and add some details that you like. Thank you, poem. I'm going to recycle you, and I'm going to do one more. Here's a short one, smaller than my hand, actually. But let's see if we find any poems hiding inside. Black and white thinking. Hmm, let's go with thinking. Thinking, and I'm going to make it into a cloud bubble instead of underlined. Because that's kind of something I think about when I match those two things together, the words and the picture. Thinking what? Thinking end, thinking August, thinking rain. Ooh, thinking rain. Thinking rain. Thinking rain, I've got two words, I'm gonna link them to another. Thinking rain, air, thinking rain, feels, thinking rain, stress, thinking rain, wildfire, thinking rain, world, thinking rain, color, hmm, thinking rain, people, thinking rain, feeling. Anything jumping out at you? Maybe you would have already selected a word that I've hopped over. Thinking rain. Hmm. Thinking rain. Thinking rain. Thinking rain. Hmm. You know, I don't know what else I can add to this poem. I think I'm just going to call this one complete. Thinking rain. And maybe whoever reads this poem will have a picture in their imaginations about thinking rain. It can be that short. So now I invite you to take out some papers from your recycling and maybe even some pieces from with a background that you might want to use or that you like and experiment with choosing a word on the page that has energy, holding it in your head, looking for whatever word jumps out at you to underline it. When you have about five words, see if you can stop and then go back and take away. And because we're getting awfully good at doing this together, I'm gonna invite you to add on how you take away the background and how that might change your poem. You can use any shape or line. So some examples of shapes or lines are straight, curvy, dotted, 
angled. Maybe you even want to do shapes that you love. I love circles. So maybe when you're experimenting, after you've found your words, you can go back and use line or shape to decorate and enhance your poem. Maybe I'll do one quietly while you do one as well. And then I'll show you what I've come up with. still writing making a poem this is the one that I just came up with right now and it reads art aha incredible circles lots of style so I wasn't expecting to write this of course because I never know what I'm going to write when I'm making a blackout poem but I think it works all right I almost erased my letters on art. So that's something that I should be careful to remember to not take away the letters I want because it's hard to get them back. But I've got art there. And I decided that since my poem ended up being about circles, why not put a whole bunch on the page with different colors? I hope you've had a lot of fun making poems with me. Thank you so much for joining me. Nothing is, is for keeps, as you know. So I'm going to say thank you to these words and put them back in the recycling bin. And if you had fun today, I hope you teach someone else how to make a poem. Maybe next time you have friends or family over, you can gather together in a comfortable space with some recycled materials and whatever markers you have with you and make some poems because poetry is playing with words. It's fun and I think poetry is for everybody. Thank you so much for joining me. Mm -hmm.